Eat Tequila Tuesday as well. And our guest coming up right now, Kyle Vandenbosch, former Cardinal, uh, played also with the Lions and the Titans, and, and he hangs out with us on this radio Bless show. Bless his heart. I know. We always Man. appreciate him when he's here. Kyle, it's Jimmy B and Manuj. How are you, pal? I'm good, guys. Hey, that, that's at the top of my resume. In fact, I get to hang out with you guys on Tuesday. <laughs> You're so, the best. So, the you, best. so you don't want to get a job with us <laughs> yeah. at the top there? <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, hey, before we get on the roll and start talking about these Cardinals, um, as, as Jimmy mentioned with the Barrio Queen here at Tempe Marketplace, and we're watching ESPN, and you know, it's that time where a lot of guys are getting their tendered offers and the franchise tag and tendered. And you see for a running back, this is Sa Saquon Barkley turns down his $10 million one-year tender offer. Now, we know they want one year. They want those extensions. They want those contracts. But, man, oh, man, I, I think back in the day, in your day as well, too, is $10 million bucks a year, and you're, you're turning that down for now. I'm like, I don't know. I just I, Sometimes I'm dumbfounded with the numbers that are out there, Kyle. Yeah, I really don't understand it either. Um, I mean, I mean, totally with where the running back market is. Yes, Saquon, Saquon with his injury history. I mean, once you sign that, you know that money's in your pocket. That's completely guaranteed, and it's it's your money. And so, I mean, that's there's there's running back. Look, Saquon is elite, but there are running backs um, as good or maybe just a tiny notch down. So I I really. I don't understand it. I understand how agents work. They want to get the security of a long-term deal um, and and a bunch of guaranteed money up front. But um, you know, I really never really understood guys that turned down those um, those tenders when that's guaranteed money to play football the next year. Now, when you watch the National Football League, we see different positions evolve. Has the running back position, I guess, that other term, it devolved or or gone backwards as far as importance and value? Uh, it, it, it really has. I mean, you know this. It's it's become a passing league. It's, it, it's the way teams draft offensive linemen, the ones that can pass pro. It's, it's the way the defenses draft guys, guys that can get after the quarterback. And, um, you know, it's, it's the game is much different than it used to be. Um, now, saying that, you know, I think, um, you know, some of the most valuable players in the National Football League are the, the running backs that – do a good job of catching the ball out of the backfield, getting yards after the catch. Um, you know, I think a, a player like Christian McCaffrey is so hard to game plan for because you don't know with he and Debo Samuel on the field at the same time, you don't know where they're going to line up or, or what type of plays they're going to run because they can be split out wide. They can be in the backfield. They can catch screens. They can do just about anything a wide receiver or running back can do, and, and it gives your offense so much flexibility. Kyle Vandenbosch is our guest on the Right Toyota guest line. Rocking the Newts with Jimmy B, Fox Sports 910. Take me to the uh, Cardinals then, Kyle. And we have a uh, poll out right now. Uh, it is our State 48 roofing. Uh, it's your call question of the day. And it is on Buda Baker. And should they do a couple of things now that they are four weeks away? One, extend Buda Baker. Two, find a go-to receiver. Three, getting Zach Ertz 100%. Or four, offensive line. Try to solidify that. Where are you when you hear those four options? I mean, I know we, we've talked about this before, but to me, um, it, their top priority is, is figuring out how to get Buda Baker into the fold. Um, you know, you've got a roster full of players who are buying into a culture and Buda Baker is your culture. He is um, the guy that does things the right way, prepares the right way, plays the right way, plays with the passion, enthusiasm, and, and at times a reckless abandon that, that is a bit of a throwback. Um, and so, you know, when you have that guy on your roster, you've got to figure out how to keep him. Because, um, you know, I like to think I was that guy on, on the rosters I was on. And if, if coaches say how they want, you to be how they want you to prepare um oftentimes it goes in one year and out the other but when that example is in the locker room and on the practice field and on the game field um you can point to it on film and say this is what we're talking about this is how i want you to play um and not having buddha baker on your roster and for a coaching staff in a front office that came in and said we want to establish a certain culture 
Um, you need to figure out a way to get Buda Baker uh, into the fold, whether it be more guaranteed money, whether it be a contract extension, whatever it looks like. Um, you, you know, I, I understand you, you know, we talked about this before too. You don't want to, you know, get into to the reputation of if a player holds your feet to the fire that you're going to cave and give them an extension of two years left, but you make exceptions for special players. And, and Buda Baker is a special player, even potentially a, a generational type type not even a generational type athlete or but he's just a generational type professional you know and and you need that guy in your locker and so to me it's it's a pretty easy answer you've got to get him in the fold and then you move forward Cal it's interesting here we were about three or four weeks ago talking about guys at the different positions and you have Isaiah Simmons moving him to outside weak side linebacker and Zayvon Collins going to left defensive end. And then we talked about two weeks ago about, well, Isaiah is now over with the defensive backs, work with the defensive backs. And we thought at that time it was just him working on his pass coverage. And now, no matter what depth chart you look at, whether it's CBS Sports or ESPN or Yahoo or NBC Sports, whatever, now when Isaiah Simmons is the backup cornerback to one Marco Wilson. Um, I don't know if you've checked that or heard about that all lately, but I just want to get your thoughts on my how the mighty have fallen, or how a, a Swiss Army knife is tucked away and pretty much folded up. Yeah, it's time. It's time to find out what he does well and, and put him there, and give him an opportunity to either succeed or to fail. Um, you know, it's it's the the frustrating part is you, you know he's had a long enough career that sh you should know what you have, and I don't feel that this organization three minutes who he is or what he is and so i think you know they're going with the right approach let's plug him into a position let's give him all the coaching we can and all the resources we can and and see how it goes and then you know you he's got a decision to make next off season but you know just even outside of look david collins is moving positions and um isaiah simmons is locked into a position I, since i have been covering the cardinals or working with the organization uh, post career, I, there's never been so many questions yeah. about what this team is going to look like, and, and I'm excited to see. Uh, I believe in this coaching staff. Um, I believe in the direction they're headed, but um, this team could be good, could be competitive, or this team could be terrible. And I, I really don't know what they're going to look like. I think that's the uh, the flip of the coin right there, and you summed it up. They could be good, they could be competitive, or they could just stink. Uh, I'm. I, I'm leaning toward the stink aspect. Two minutes. I, I don't really want to, but uh, looking at their schedule and everything, Kyle, I, I can't really see them and without their starting quarterback uh, being that competitive, at least early in the year. Yeah, I think on paper, paper says stink. Yep. I, I mean, they lost a lot of talent. They lost DeAndre Hopkins. Yep. They lost their two, two most productive pass rushers. Um, and it looks like, the cupboard is fairly bare, but saying that um, culture can win you games. Culture can keep you in games. And I think that they are establishing the right culture. Now, you know, they're, they're going to need to add some talent because to be frank, um, you know, the, the NFL, it's, it's the, the best teams are comprised of the best players. And at some point we're going to have to upgrade the talent, but, uh, if you play a physical brand of football, if you buy into the fundamentals and the techniques and, and everybody's one minute, one minute and uh, players are held accountable. I, I think this team has an opportunity to at least be competitive and be a team that uh, as a fan, I can be proud of. It's always good, pal. When you're on the show, make sure that you keep us at the top of your resume. Okay. We appreciate yeah. that. Kyle. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's bold. It's in bold and it's laminated, so it's not moving. It's bold. As you hear the, and it's laminated. As you hear the facetious <laughs> ooze out of his voice. Thank you, Kyle. We appreciate it, my brother. See you, pal. You got to go. There have you go. One. That's Kyle Vandenbosch. Oh, he's fun to have on the show. And he is brought to you by.